The number one factor that influences how you're going to fare at any age is a personality trait, a, a mindset, uh, you might call it, of conscientiousness. That swamps all other factors uh, in terms of whether you're going to be healthy and, uh, and happy at age 8 or age 108. Conscientiousness, which is a cluster of traits relating to stick to reliability, dependability, uh, doing what you'll say you'll do, that's the biggest single factor. And although it's unevenly distributed throughout the population, some people have a lot of it, some people have none, and on the one extreme, if you've got too much of it, it becomes obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, you know, compulsive hand washing or things like that, um, you can change that as well as any personality trait or mindset quality at any age. It's never too early to start and it's never too late to start. Yeah. And that, that's super interesting because when you talk about personality, because you're basically saying the number one factor that predicts if you're going to age well is how conscientious you are. Yeah. And some people will hear that and think, oh my God, uh, I'm not that conscientious a person. So that number one factor that Dan said, and Dan, that neuroscientist said, I don't have it. But what you're then saying is that you can change your personality. Well, you can. The, the whole field of psychotherapy is based on this idea. And although not all psychotherapeutic techniques work for all people, um, you know, there's a bunch of studies coming out uh, about behavioral change. Uh, just to take one example, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, has been shown to be better at improving symptoms of depression and lack of conscientiousness. And it, this CBT is, is not used lying on a couch and talking about your childhood and you know, your the relationship with your mother. It's practical tools that the therapist gives you to help you reach the goals you said that you wanted to reach, sort of like your patient's coming to you. CBT doesn't tell you what to do. They tell you how to do it. And it's been shown to be more effective than drugs, even antidepressants. And interestingly, perhaps counterintuitively, CBT alone is more effective than the combination of drugs and CBT. But it's not just therapies, uh, meditation, yoga, Finding inspiration from literature or art or, or somebody that you've read about in the news who has made a change, uh, maybe somebody in your family and saying, you know, I'm inspired by that. I'm going to do that. Super interesting, isn't it? That conscientiousness is that number one trait uh, and that it's something that you can train or work on certainly. At any age. At any age, which, it, which is very encouraging. So I guess, can you finish a task you started? Is and can you, and can, and not only that, but can you do the best possible job you can? Can you do not just good enough? Can you try to push yourself to do more, to do better? Um, can you, can you grow in whatever it is that you're doing? If it's keeping a garden, um, if it's cooking, for yourself and your family. If it's choosing vegetables, learning which ones to choose at the market so you get the most flavorful and healthy ones with the most nutrients. Any area of a human endeavor where you can learn and keep learning is what's neuroprotective. And um, I mean, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's, it, it's it, curiosity, really, which is a separate trait. It's number two on the list after conscientiousness. Is it really? People who are curious do better in life. So conscientiousness and curiosity, the two C's of yeah. aging well. If you can remain curious and learn new things, that's neuroprotective. It doesn't mean that you won't get Alzheimer's or that you can reverse it or slow it down, but it does mean, based on the research, that you may get it and nobody would notice it for years because you've built up this cognitive reserve. Think of it this way. If you go to the gym and you can bench press uh, 200 kilos, on a bad day, you could still do 50. Uh, I can't, but you've got some muscle reserve. Same thing with the brain. You, you build up this reserve through doing new things, whatever they are. Just to bring this full circle, um, the other a third quality that we can all work on is gratitude. Yeah. Um, I, as, you, as, you, as you know, I had the opportunity to meet with the Dalai Lama yeah. in doing the research for the book. And he meditates on gratitude and compassion two to four hours every day. And he believes the real secret to happiness 
not necessarily longevity, but happiness, is to embrace gratitude. If you're happy for what you have, and you're not focused on what you don't have and feeling slighted or carrying around anger and such. Uh, and how come so-and-so has a Tesla and I don't? Or you know, so-and-so got promoted and I didn't. So-and-so's spouse is better looking than mine. All of that stuff uh, throws our brain into a kind of fear mode. It activates the amygdala. It releases cortisol. But you know, Warren Buffett agrees. Yeah. The idea of experiencing gratitude. My grandmother was a an immigrant to the United States from Germany, a Holocaust survivor. Uh, she escaped the Nazis. And she had written out on a piece of paper uh, the things she was grateful for. Yeah. And she recited them every morning when she woke up and every night before she went to bed. She was not religious, but... We were talking about how you could affect change, and we talked about meditation and medication and psychotherapy. Another thing that works is religion. All the world's religions teach you that you can change yourself. You can become more compassionate or generous or yeah. more tolerant or uh, express more gratitude. So she had this list, and she told us that every day she woke up, she told me, my, me and my mom, around the time she was 79, that she sang God Bless America every morning. God bless America, written by another immigrant, by the way, Irving Berlin, another Jewish immigrant. And she felt that it was her purpose to do that. She had to express gratitude that her family was saved. So for her 80th birthday, my mother and I bought her a little $80 electronic keyboard. And I got pieces of masking tape and put them on the keys to play the song. And I put numbers on them oh, wow. so she'd know what order to play them in. And she loved it. She'd never played an instrument before. So she's going one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, like this. Uh, and then by the time it was her 81st birthday, she had lifted the masking tape off and was playing it from memory. By her 82nd birthday, she'd worked out a rudimentary harmony with the left hand. Oh, wow. She kept improving. She did this every single morning. And every night before she went to bed until she died at 97. And we found the keyboard on her bed table. Press subscribe to get more inspiration and ideas on how to feel better so you can get more out of life. And if you have a moment, why not check out this conversation that I've picked out as a perfect follow-up. Remember, lifestyle change is always worth it because when you feel better, you live more.